What's up guys, it's Movie Man here. Okay, so I did a review on The Amazing Spider-Man 2, and that video was mostly all the what I think of what's good about the movie. Now I am going to talk about, now I'm going to rant over this movie, because this movie does have a bunch of problems. And the reason why I couldn't do that in my um, other review is because I didn't have enough time, and unfortunately, uh, YouTube took away my longer than 50 minute uh, video upload, which that's kind of really sad. So I had to limit it down, which I couldn't do that. So I decided to make a separate video of my rants. So yeah, so these are the stuff that I don't like about The Amazing Spider-Man 2. Like, first of all, the plot is cluttered. I mean, it has the same problem as Spider-Man 3. Like they're trying to make it like, like, oh, let's just throw a bunch of junk together, see if this all works. And you know, they just cram in a bunch of stuff, which, I mean, like, there's Electro's story, there's Green, there's Harry Osborn, Green Goblin story with Peter Parker, there's Peter Parker and Gwen Stancy, there's the Sinister Six thing, there's Peter Parker and that May story, and then you, and then there's also uh, this, uh, Peter Parker's uh, father's backstory. I mean, that is way too many things that, wait, six things. <laughs> no wonder, Sinister Six. Anyways, but yeah, there's so much stuff going on, which I hate it. Which I hate it when superhero movies do uh, do this. Like, like I hate it when they're just trying to be all like, "Ooh, let's be epic and let's try to throw a bunch of stuff in for the fans." Like, I hate it when they do that. I mean, you gotta make sure if it if the story works and if it fits well. I mean, with this movie, there's so much plot points where like it just stops and then just goes to the next one and then stops, just goes to the next one. Like, I find that so annoying. Which I mean. I, but it's so annoying. Ugh. I mean, there's just so much stuff cluttered. I mean, I mean, what would be better if you only focus on a few things? I mean, what I think will be focused really well. How about cut the rhino out in this movie? Because he felt completely pointless in this movie, which I will get to that later. Um, and also take away the Peter Parker and Aunt May thing. And also have only a little bit of the Peter Parker's father's backstory. Because I actually kind of like it how they explained a little bit more than the first movie. Because in the first movie, they had to cut down so much of it, which it kept us uh, wondering and questioning. But this time, they get to explain it a little bit more in this one, which I thought find out pretty... Which I find that pretty good, actually. But I think they could cut down that bit a little bit. And also, have, have like half and half of Green Goblin. Like... They don't show Green Goblin until like the very end of the movie, which I find that so disappointingly, just disappointing. So I think they could just only like just half and two villains must have two villains because with three villains, it won't work because again, it will be cluttered. I mean, like Spider-Man 3, there's three villains. I mean, two is fine. I mean, say like the Dark Knight trilogy, for example, each movie like Batman Begins, Dark Knight, Dark Knight Rises, they each have their own two villains and somehow they made it feel like they, they fit in so well and it works although usually there's always one who doesn't get focused so much like like scarecrow and two-face but still though it does feel like it works but in this one though oh god i mean like they had electro i mean electro is mostly the main villain in this movie even though i kind of feel like harry osborne is but uh, what, but like in the half of the movie, they send um, Electro to the same asylum, and you don't get to see him until like half an hour into the move, a uh, next uh, hour into the movie, which that's so uh, disappointing as well. So yeah, there's so much stuff with the plot that's just cluttered and it's just a mess. Also, another thing I don't like about this movie is that how much like just how poorly these can these villains are written. I mean. First, let's talk about Rhino. I mean, first, let's talk about Rhino. Rhino is one of my favorite Spider-Man villains. Not my ultimate favorite, but just... He's so cool. I mean, I mean, what I really like about Rhino, he's like the biggest, toughest, strongest uh, arch nemesis of Spider-Man that he could possibly take, take Spider-Man down. But in this movie, it's sort of like Bane from Batman and Robin. They just threw him in as just a joke. 
Well, not technically. I mean, what I'm trying to say is, is that it's sort of this lame build-up for the next Spider-Man movie or the next Sinister Six movie, which it doesn't work. You should save Rhino for the third movie. That would be so much better. I mean, I think Rhino would be more focused in the third movie, I guess. But, but if they don't have him for the third movie, then all hope is lost. I mean, we don't get to know anything about Rhino. I mean, what? All we know is that he's a robber. Okay, I mean, d does he have a personality? Does does he have a goal that he really wants? I mean, do, where do they know where he where, where he comes from? I don't know. We don't know anything about the Rhino, which that's so sad. Oh my god! Oh yeah, the Rhino was so freaking pointless in this movie. I mean, it was just a basic setup to the Sinister Six movie, and also Electro. I mean. I thought his character development was okay, I would say, but it was okay. At least that one's kind of focused enough. Except the only problem is is, is that his origin story is the same uh, supervillain origin story as like Jim Carrey, the Riddler from Batman Forever or Syndrome from The Incredibles or even it, uh, Guy Pearce in Iron Man 3. It's got that same plot where the nerd it, it has like this fanboy crush on the superhero, but when that superhero disappoints, disappoints them, they turn into this bad guy supervillain that they want to get revenge on. I mean, we already heard this before. But I thought I thought it was handled pretty well because of the performance of uh, Jamie Foxx because he wasn't that bad in this movie. I thought it was really good. But but still, though. And also, Green Goblin in this movie. I'm like, Harry Osborn was all entire focusly in this movie, but as soon as we, when he becomes the Green Goblin, I swear to God, Venom had more screen time in Spider-Man 3 than the Green Goblin in, in Amazing Spider-Man 2. That's how bad it is. I mean, I love Green Goblin. I love the way how he looks. I mean, I love the idea he doesn't have the silly mask. And I thought he sounds so freaking creepy. He looks so creepy with the smile. I mean, I don't know if people will find out over the top or not, but I find it creepy, which I find that so cool. And Dane Hanna is a great actor. I thought he performed as the Green Goblin really well. But he's only in the movie for like... Like, what, two minutes of the movie? Frick, that just sucks. That freaking sucks. I mean, they, I really wish they could just fit a little bit more, but then again, it's another useless, pointless character development throwaway for the Sinister Six. I mean, that is one lame character buildup. And, yeah, I mean, and also... We don't, and also, I really hated how he, how it, like, when he becomes the Green Goblin, when he finds his suit and everything, I wouldn't, I wouldn't technically call this one a spoiler, but when he gets his suit, he just puts on his suit and feels better. I mean, should we know anything about the suit? I mean, that was, like, his first time looking at the suit. I mean, how would he know how to work that thing? I mean, how would he get in that? I mean, what, did he know how to work it, even though that's, like, the first time he saw the suit? I mean... Frank, it was just another throwaway. I mean, it's just like the web shooters in the first Amazing Spider-Man movie. Like, I really wish they could have focused on that a little bit more. But instead, it's like, few seconds gone, poof. That's it. Like, are you kidding me? Oh, my God. I mean, the, the villain, the, these villains are poorly developed. I mean, how am I supposed to be excited for the Sinister Six if these villains are developed enough? I mean... It's either this, it's because of the runtime or there's way too much stuff in the story that's going on. But that's just the problem. These villains are poorly developed. I mean, that sucks. I mean, how am I supposed to be excited for the Sinister Six now? In fact, am I even going to be excited for the third movie at all? Also, another thing I hate about this movie is just the way how Sony just advertise the crap out of this movie. I mean... I'm talking about, like, the trailers and everything. Like, the trailers spoiled so much. I mean, like, it feels like I've seen the movie the second time. I mean, before when the before when the actual movie came out, I mean, it's like you can take all those footages and uh, clips, and you, if, if you just put them on, like, Final Cut Pro and you put them in order, then you can pretty much make the whole movie out of that. That's how this, uh, I mean, that's how this point it was. I mean, you know... How many trailers we got? We got like the first one, we got the international trailer, we got the New Year's Eve trailer, we got the uh, um, Enemies Battle one or whatever, there's the Rise of the Electro trailer, there's a few couple of commercials, two of them actually, oh, and Super Bowls, 
like two of them, and then uh, Rise of Electro, and then Rise of Electro trailer, and then there's their final trailer, which that's like 11, 11 freaking things. Like, they spoiled so much in this movie. Even like when the Super Bowl was just hinting about Gwen Stancy and I'm not going to spoil what happens, but they're, they're hinting something about Gwen Stancy in the Super Bowl commercials. And I'm just like, okay, come on. We all know what's going to happen now. Since you already like just gave us an obvious hint what was going to happen. Because mostly for hardcore Spider-Man fans would know this. I mean... I mean, when that scene actually happened, I'm just thinking to myself, like, I'm not surprised at all. I knew this was coming because, you know, they already revealed it. I mean, even they revealed all the action scenes. Like, I didn't see in the movie, a n I didn't see any new action scenes. I mean, all those trailers took every single clips of all the action scenes and just put them all into a trailer. I mean, that's... Oh, my God. This, oh, this, there's just... The advertising is so bad. I mean, now I'm starting to learn a lesson now. Because next time when Spider-Man 3... Next time when The Amazing Spider-Man 3 comes out, I'm only going to limit myself for two trailers. That's about it. Nothing, No more. Nothing else. Just two trailers. That's about it. Because I think I finally learned a lesson. Because Sony just... Drive. I mean, there was a comment from one from one of my uh, favorite uh, subscribers who comments on videos, Jedi Dreamer. He points out that Sony markets this movie so much like there's no tomorrow. I agree what he completely says. I mean, every single time they release one, one, even a clip, I would say it's a spot. It's a big spoiler. I mean, oh my gosh. I mean, Sony is so bad at this. So. Man. So yeah, two trailers. I'm only limited now for two trailers for these kind of Spider-Man movies. Or maybe Sony should give up Spider-Man and give the right full rights and send Spider-Man to Marvel Studios so that way they can put Spider-Man in the freaking Avengers. I mean, is that all we want? Spider-Man and the Avengers? X-Men and the Avengers? All those heroes combined together? I mean, come freaking on. <sighs> so... That's pretty much about all my rants with the movie. I mean, yeah, that's like all the rants I have with this movie. I mean, again, this movie does have problems, just a lot of problems, but I still think it's still pretty decent. Though. I mean, like I said, I did say check this one out because I thought there were some things that were pretty good. I mean, if you haven't heard about that, then you can check out my other video. But seriously, no, but this is just like the one that I just want to deeply explain about what I really just hate about the movie. So, yeah. So, lots of questions today is, what is one thing or multiple things that you hate about The Amazing Spider-Man 2? Comment that down below. Check out my other videos. They're really cool. Like and subscribe.